Alabama's streams, once beautiful, are now full of items used or lost by humans over the centuries. Most of those items are trash. However, there are historical treasures just waiting to be recovered. Today we are attempting to save history lost in time. Back in the water, and who would have thought the very first find would be a dinosaur in an Alabama creek? But there it is. <laughs> <laughs> and they called him Littlefoot. <laughs> I got a little foot. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Look at that right there, guys. You're not going to believe it. That is literally how that bottle was sitting. I have not touched it. <clears throat> what is it? Chiricola? <laughs> Chiricola. It does have a major chip lip up there. This one's from Birmingham. This is a 1915 variant, and check it out. Look at the snail buried down inside of there. Still a cool find, still gonna come out with us. 100 year old soda history, guys. All right, I got another one laying right here. I can see that the lip's sheared, but we're gonna see if it's gonna be a good whiskey glass together. Oh, is that a crack? No, that's a string. Leeds Bottling Company, Leeds, Alabama. And I don't see any heel damage or anything. So that's gonna be, that's not a crack, that's that moss on it. That's gonna be a really nice drinking glass. How about that? Excited to have that one. I do see right here, a heel to a hobble skirt. Looks like it's just gonna be a heel. Oh, I don't know. Yep, just the heel. Where was that from? Opelika, Alabama. <laughs> that's different. Well, there are definitely bottles washed up. Let's we'll see if we can find a whole one now. Y'all see them? These are pretty easy to spot right here. I can get up here. Let's get this one first. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. Virginia fruit juice. Norfolk, Virginia. And that one does not have any damage. Wow, that's cool, guys. I can't believe that one's in as good a shape. That shows you that it's been buried. Let's look at this one over here though. This is a Chiricola, I can tell by what I can see so far. Oh, it's got a major lip chip. But instead of being a Birmingham, that would have been a Leeds. Two of them in a row right there. I need to take my time and look really hard right through here. Look at this right here. Floating. Star Fox 64. <laughs> we need your help, Star Fox. Wow. You know, some of these Star Fox games are pretty dang collectible. That's going to come out with me. It doesn't belong in here regardless. I thought I saw a bottle, but I keep murking myself out. So we have to stand here for a second and let all of this murk clear. You can see a fishing reel right here. We're going to pull it up. Hey, still got the fishing line all on it too. Maybe there's a fish on it. Old Zepco open face. Let's get it out of the water. Check it out right there. Oh, let's see what you are. Ah, <clears throat> oh, snap top soda water from Birmingham, but this is the beautiful diamond one. I love making whiskey glasses out of these. That's a really nice bottle, guys. I hate the top's gone. Looks like it was recently broke, probably in the last flood that we had. Look right here. There's a bottle, there's a bottle. I can tell they both got damaged, but we are looking for whiskey glasses today. That would have been one of the tough straight side Coca-Cola's from Birmingham. Too many heel chips to make that one into a whiskey glass. This one right here, looks like it could be a Chiricola. Yep, it is. With too much damage going on from leads. There are a ton of bottles out here though, so. I'm hoping for a rare crown top. Let's keep it going. I just pulled this one out right here. This is the patent 1923. This one's from Birmingham. I don't know how rashed up it is until I get that moss off of it with a drop of acid. But if it cleans up nice and it's not super rashy, this will be another whiskey glass. And Miranda just got her one over there as well. So if nothing else, we're gonna get a bunch of whiskey glasses. I'm setting them all on the bank right here where I can pick them up on the way back. Just got another whiskey glass candidate. 
I do believe another 1923 variant, but Miranda's is special. That she found. special. It is very special. Hers is a rare bottle to find. Look at that, Leeds, Alabama. Does it say 1915? I can't tell. It's so warm. Yep, right there, November 16th, 1915. That is a very rare bottle, and that one doesn't have very much rash, baby. That right there may be a whiskey glass that we keep just because of how rare that dang bottle is. That's pretty nice. If you look right where my hand is reflected in the water, you can see a bottle sticking out. I can't tell where the neck is, whether or not it's snap leaning against that rock. And I can't tell about the hill, but it's about four foot deep. So I'm gonna let Miranda come over here. She's got the only working rake today <laughs> to rake it out. I've already been in up to my elbows several times, but this would be up to my neck if I've been over into it. She gave me the rake. Let's just see what kind of bottle. I'm gonna let her hold the camera, I think because it's wedged down in there and I'm gonna need both hands. You got it. Just don't fall down in here. I don't wanna go home yet, we're finding bottles. Where are you? You done got it murked up? It don't take much in this creek. There we go, it's mm -hmm. loose. Now then I gotta see where it is to go. Oh, home. you just hide it and it fell back down, I see it. I see it too. This look like the neck snapped. The bottom's going to uh, What was it? Oh, that's a different style of Terracola. Where was that from? That looks like it said Camp Hill, Alabama. That would have been very, very rare if that was a Camp Hill Terracola. If you look right there, you can see Camp. Dang, I wish that would have been whole. And look at how the chair is more block letter. Wow, that's super cool, guys. I've found a lot of stuff in creeks through the years, but I can honestly say I don't think I've ever found one of these. <laughs> it's like a fancy bird cage. Oh, that's exactly what it is. With all of the attachments. That's interesting. <laughs> There's another dinosaur down here. She's way behind me with a rake, so I'm gonna do the old foot maneuver. Ah! Yep, another dinosaur. <laughs> I got another dinosaur and this one still works. Uh-uh. <laughs> we're here for antique bottles, but if you can't tell, we're used by everything we pull out of the water. Just getting weirder by the minute at this point. Oh, God, that's heavy. Got a chandelier. <laughs> a chandelier. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to sit over here by the birdcage. Obviously, we can't carry everything out, but what I usually do is I'll set this stuff to the side and I'll grab it back on trips one little piece at a time and I'll get it out of the water. I'll set it over there on the edge. But there's a lot of trash in these creeks. It's ridiculous when you get into these urban creeks how much stuff ends up in here. I'll check it out. We've got Scrappy Doo. Then we've got another dinosaur. It's like a raptor. And then we've got, hey, look, there's a ring right there. Found you a ring, babe. It's all washed out of, it looks like something, somebody threw in here. Look at all the matchbox cars. These are older, it looks like. Look at them all. But that ring right there, it's definitely gonna be a fake ring other than the stone, but <laughs> that's pretty neat. It's <laughs> a lot of crap in here. Ron's automotive screwdriver. And, oh, I see a stapler. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff in here today. It's weird. Yeah, here you go, look at that ring. fake but <laughs> <laughs> it's a little cracker jack ring <laughs> looks like we've got our first phone of the day oh yeah look at that battery nice and swollen flip phone and here's a spoon and most of you are probably gonna know what that spoon was used for 
I just had an absolute heart attack. So you see this fence right here? Somebody's pushed a lot of their junk over against it right here on the creek bank. And that's how a lot of the like blocks and brick and stuff are ending up in here. Or like that knife right there that I didn't see till just now. You know, there again, just a razor knife. And as I was looking at it, I was like, man, that's crazy. And right there, there was a squirrel and I didn't see it. that squirrel jumped out and landed on the tree. And I literally just about had a heart attack. <laughs> Scared me to death. There again, this doesn't belong in the water. We're gonna get it out. This is just an incredibly trashy urban creek, sadly though. Miranda just pulled both of these within inches of each other off of the bottom. It's a four colored one. Purple, green, and yellow. And that's got a swirl in the white. And then a really pretty blue and white one. It's crazy they stayed close together, isn't it? I know, it was like three inches from each other. Check it out, right there. Looks like I've got my first marble. Oh yeah, that's pretty. Red, white, and blue. Guess it's a patriotic marble. Red, white, and blue. I think a lot of people have wondered why we haven't been in creeks like we had been. And the answer for that is, is Alabama was in a severe drought last year. And literally, we depend upon erosion to wash and churn the bottom of the creeks up for new items. So with it being a drought, nothing new was coming out of the water, like at all. And we walked creeks for like two months without finding anything and I couldn't get any video footage. And that's why we started back digging so heavily. And without the creeks being in a drought and not producing material, we wouldn't have found the new spot where all the good stuff's come out of while we were digging. However, I really, really missed the creeks. Even though they can be trashy. Check out that giant sloth over there, guys. Dinosaurs and giant sloths and Alabama Creek. I'm pretty sure that's a good title for this video. <laughs> Only kidding. All right, this is my bottle cleaning station, so don't mind how messy it is. But here are the bottles that we found in the creek today that are incredibly covered in moss and stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put them right down here and some acid. And that acid is not something you wanna breathe in or touch. There again, it's muriatic acid. It's meant for etching concrete. So you know that it is strong. And I'm gonna stick all of these in here and let them soak for about 24 hours. Then I'll show you guys what they look like after that. All right, it's been 24 hours since I dropped those creek bottles down in here. We're just gonna see how they turned out. Keep in mind, this right here is not a way to tumble a bottle but just to remove the creek grime so you see the yellow kind of tint to it that is not the right color that's the acid that you're seeing so here is that leaves bottle it could use a tumble for sure i'll set it to the side the ones i really wanted to look at were those broken hobble skirts because of how much moss were on them. And you can see there's still some on there, but watch, as soon as you wipe it with your hand, it comes right off. That one looks like it's gonna be pretty good. I'll finish these up in just a second, let y'all see them. I'm gonna take the rest of them out of the acid, clean them up, let y'all look at them. All right, here are a few of the bottles that we're gonna keep or sell or turn into whiskey glasses, that acid bath is a way for me to be able to basically qualify whether a bottle is worth saving or not. Sadly, on a couple of these, there are some issues. Like this one right here, you see all the flea bites all over that thing from rolling down the creek. That's one that's gonna be a hard sell on a whiskey glass. A lot of people are not super excited whenever it's chipped up. However, that's a good bottle, guys. So I don't know, I gotta make my mind up whether I'm going to actually tumble this one and turn it into a whiskey glass because tumbling does not necessarily help with all of that pitting, but it will make it where it's not so hazy and more clear. Gotta make my mind up on that one. This bottle right here is actually probably the bottle of the day, even with a snap top. That's that 1915 bottle that is from Leeds, Alabama. And that is a very, very, very tough hobble skirt to find right there. It does have some heel issues down there that you can see. However, it's rare enough that I'm gonna turn that into a glass for sure. Then the one bottle that was absolutely perfect today is that Virginia Fruit Juice Company from Norfolk, Virginia. And you can see after the acid bath, you can still see the lines right here from the mineralization. However, that doesn't bother me. It actually makes the bottle look pretty cool. Lip was perfect, heel was perfect. 
all in all, that's a great bottle. Been a couple years since I found one, so excited to have it. This 1923 right here is from Birmingham. It's got some major hill chips. It's not as rare. Uh, on the fence for what to do with that, let me know in the comments below. Keep in mind, every single one of these has turned into a whiskey glass. I have around $25 invested in it, just in tumbling, cleaning, cutting, shipping, all of that. So to be able to sell one of these, I'm gonna have to make at least 40 because by the time eBay takes their cut, which is 15%, that's only gonna leave me about $5. And then is that worth the time for me to box and do all that kind of stuff back and forth? I gotta weigh that one out and figure out whether I'm gonna do anything with it. Then we got this soda water right here which is right at the point of time where they were changing the bottle design. We always kind of call it the diamond effect, Cherokee from Birmingham. You can see down here, it says patent pending. That's because that was the brand new design. So all in all, wasn't a terrible day, guys. I enjoyed it. I hope you guys were excited for us to be back in the creek. However, it's raining again, if you can hear it on the building right now. And that means that we should be able to get back in the creek next week and find some cool stuff too. We'll see you guys in the next adventure.